Alright, so just watch the two and a half hour long expletive fest that was this video between Sargon and Julio. I don't know how to say the dude's name. I only heard it a couple times and it escapes me. Alright, so it starts off with this Gamergate discussion about the goals of Gamergate. The argument is whether or not ethics is a key point. And yet at like 9.37 in the video, Julio, or the challenger, whoever he is, says ethics, and then pauses. Uh, you can tell he, he just realized that he lost. And now I have to set the, the other two and a half hours of this video of him dealing with the fact that he lost his argument already. So around 13 minutes is a particularly interesting point where... Julio is talking about people that are fundamentally incompatible with ethics. Hmm. That's an interesting statement. You are saying that these human beings are somehow genetically or, I suppose, raised in a way that makes them unable to make ethics? <laughs> it's ridiculous, and it's very inflammatory, very hateful. This is the kind of speaking that we need to stop as a human race, because it makes us look like asses. There's a point later in the video where, just shortly after the previous point, where he's talking about new media. What is new media? How is it not the same thing as whatever old media is? He wants to burn it down, he says. Burn what down? Old media? Fox News. I can understand wanting to burn down Fox News, but that wouldn't stop any kind of systemic issue of corruption. That is policing ourselves as a human race to be better individuals. We, we can't pretend like corporations make greed and money makes greed. No, we as humans want more than our neighbor. That's normal. We have to teach ourselves and our children to be better. Around 20 minutes or so, they start having a discussion about the economy, basically, and how it should run. Apparently, Julio is much more for a donator economy versus a patron economy. Unfortunately, a donator economy doesn't work when you're dealing with humans, because humans don't like to give. And when we do give, we tend to undervalue. Now, I kind of view this social justice warrior and Gamergate thing from afar. I enjoy watching all of the media about it, but I certainly don't like to get involved. Uh, so, I don't Reddit or any of that stuff, or at least not currently at the time of this recording. But from what I understand of a social justice warrior, how do Julio and this Seattle truth fella not fit the bill? I see something common among these social justice warrior types from what I see. They use the word respect derogatively. I always see them telling someone that they respect them, and it's usually in the same breath as belittling their ideas or basically telling them that they are invalid in this current situation. But I really don't want to focus on them too much. Seattle Truth, or whatever his name is, was not a big part of the video. It leaps back into Julio's piece with Julio stating something along the lines of don't argue with an idiot because they'll win from experience. I cannot help but feel this is foreshadowing, because Julio is going to spend the next roughly hour and a half sticking his foot in his mouth. After about 45 minutes of Julio being rude to Sargon, Sargon is rude back. And of course Julio takes massive offense to this. It's just one of those dish it out but can't take it kind of deals. It just makes me giggle. So, this is about an hour into the video or so. Julio, the challenger in this situation, the one who's challenging Sargon, he does not seem to understand that the burden of proof is on him, as he is the one making the claim. I see this a lot in the kind of genre of media, journalism, it's become, for some reason, socially acceptable to make wild claims and then expect the other person to defend themselves. I mean, we have laws in America against this. They're called libel laws. It's so you can't just print crazy things about whoever the target is and not expect to not get in trouble. It's the reason I'm not allowed to say John Travolta is an alien, at least not in earnest. 
I do, however, understand the discussion and the need for discussion. I used to watch a lot of Angry Joe. He he was a good show. He was entertaining, and that was the important part. And he displayed the information I was looking for. But I don't remember what point specifically, but it started to become very obvious that his reviews stopped being genuine. So, I stopped watching. I stopped subscribing. There is a point somewhere in the video where Julio says that he's subscribed to some location that he does not support. And it really goes back to that argument whether, well, uh, on the preferred type of economy, whether it's a patron economy or a donator economy. This is how patron economies work. I mean, we live in a patron economy. By subscribing to a channel, you are giving that content developer money. I hope Sargon is getting paid because I have subscribed to his channel. His points are irrelevant. He does not claim any authority over any kind of journalism. He is making a bunch of opinion pieces. And I just kind of like to hear the guy talk. He's got a fairly pleasant voice, and I like to hear his opinion. I feel like they uh, embody the side of the argument that I want to listen to in a way that I will listen to it. I feel like it's an important thing to try and get uh, every side of an argument, and I feel like that's what Tulio's intent actually is. I don't think he's actually doing anything corrupt. I don't think anybody's actually paying him to try and take down Sargon of Akkad. I think that is the... And this is the part where I'm sure I'm going to be quoted and just completely torn apart by all of the internets. It's just the natural state of the social justice warrior. This Julio fellow, I suppose, was an active personality on the Angry Joe Army forums. Which, regardless of whatever they said, they can do whatever they want with. Everybody knows that. It's their property. It's their responsibility to maintain it to their liking. Enough said, really. If you need a better example, you cannot go into Toys R Us and start spouting religious rhetoric. I, at least I assume. I assume that they will ask you to leave the store, and then if you don't, demand it with threat of force if needed, probably from local law enforcement. And that's perfectly acceptable. That's per that's their private property. If you want to have a space to say whatever you like, then buy a space to say whatever you like. These are my beliefs. I understand they're shaped by my nationality, but I feel like my nation has some pretty good laws, at least for the most part. Uh, that, however, is not the subject at hand. British law is actually more of the subject at hand, at least for the later part of the video. Sargon has apparently been developing a game, and has at least provided some kind of proof of its existence. I've not found any of this Julio persons, nor can I vet him at all for any reason, it seems. Not that I've dug extremely hard. It was about a five-minute Google search, which I know is not any kind of actual research. That said, I still haven't found any of this man's credentials, so I would like to see them at least, to, to see what kind of indie game development experience he has, because it's real easy to claim it. I mean, I could claim it. I don't. It, it would be obnoxious for me to. What could I really show you to prove that I'm an indie game developer? I have some college examples that I made for a college course. I have some independent projects that I've done in Game Maker and RPG Maker VX. Even a really interesting space engineer scenario. Do any of these make me an independent game developer? No. None of these are professional attempts. I would not sell these for money. I would not expect someone to buy them for money. I would not display them in hopes of receiving money for them. That makes it not a professional attempt. If I did, it would be a professional attempt and I would claim it. That's really the difference. That's the difference between Sargon making a professional game and a hobbyist attempt at a game. He's trying to do it professionally. He's obviously not good at it because it's obviously his first time. This is my third YouTube video, way better than my first one. And if you actually go back and to my earliest display, it was actually a bunch of screenshots that were actually just posted together quickly to make appearance of motion. So, yes, you must get better as you go. Julio, for some reason, feels wrong because of Sargon's poor work ethic on keeping all of his stuff up to date. And 
I don't understand why he feels slighted. He may be attempting to be some kind of content or product reviewer, but from his cited work, it seems more like he is a whistleblower of some kind, and he's just blowing his whistle. There's a story about a boy who cries wolf too often, and eventually nobody believes him. I don't think Julio's heart's in the wrong place necessarily, but I think his mind is. It's pretty obvious that Sargon wasn't attempting to con anyone out of any sum of money, and most of the people that donated were within direct contact, within a physical relation to Sargon in some way, and that kind of sucks. Because one, it either means that the internet saw it and decided it wasn't good enough, which you know, if it's not, it's not. Or he did not get the word out, and with Sargon's coverage, it's kind of on him for not getting the appropriate amount of word out, even with his company troubles. And I agree, he should do better at managing that, but, you know, that's the difference between being someone's friend and being someone's enemy. You either berate them for doing it wrong, you're their enemy, or you help them do it better in the future, you're their friend. Julio seems to be coming at Sargon like he's his enemy in this case, and I think it makes just the whole conversation hostile and hard to listen to. I'd like to take a minute to discuss the word narrative. The word narrative is being used far too often and far too liberally, to the point where it's being used completely different than what it seems to be intended for. Everybody is accusing everybody of building a narrative. At least in this video. I, I don't mean to project it to the wider world as a whole, but uh, if the shoe fits, you lace that bitch up and wear it. So why do we accuse each other of... why do they accuse each other of making a narrative against each other all of the time? Well, it's simply the easiest argument to make, and it's rather lazy. I'm a little disappointed in Sargon, because I've seen better from him in the past. I don't know Julio, so I assume this is the best he can muster. Obviously, Sargon was more prepared for the conversation than Julio was, so that's obviously affecting the way it turned out. The point is, the word narrative is thrown around, it's thrown around hostily, and it totally disrupts any kind of cogent conversation that was once going on. We need to stop using this word like that. Like, everybody, if you use this, if you say, you know, like, the feminist narrative or anything like that, you probably are to stop because it's probably not the most effective way to use words. We should try to make our language better, not worse. Alright, so this has been my third or fifth YouTube video, depending on how you decide to count it, I suppose. I'm really interesting on what anybody who might watch it thinks if this has been worth my time. I've had a lot of fun doing it, and would probably do it in the future.